Hi and welcome back to Dr. 64. I bought two C64 which were described as broken because the seller could not test them. But are they really broken or what other surprises do we will find? So you are invited. Stay with me and let's find out. Here is the first one of the two. Doesn't look bad at the first glance. A little yellowing on the case? Some keys are not yellowed at all, but others are very. The keys are all present, no deep scratches or deformations. Only some dirt, but hopefully it will be gone after proper treatment. Even the warranty sticker is on its place and not damaged. The label is in beige color, something I've never seen before. Now let's unwrap the second one. This case is a little less yellowed and also the keys are not yellowed so much. But here a key is missing and also there is a slightly more dirt. But like the first one, no deep scratches or damages. Here we have a silver label, which is much more common, but the warranty sticker, can you see that? It is glued next to the screw and is completely intact. This looks like rubber abrasion, so it should be possible to remove it with a sponge or eraser. Even the protective film is still on the batch. That doesn't look so bad at first, so let's take a look inside our patient. This little screwdriver here doesn't have as much power as its bigger brothers, but it'll do the job and it's very helpful. To open the cover, press on both sides of the lower case so that the snap-in hooks can release the upper cover. This looks really good, no rust, no water damage or mold and no dirt or dust either. This C64 seems to have been stored under ideal conditions. I already have the fear that I will not have much to do here, but let's not get too excited too soon. A screw directly through the RF cardboard? That's nothing I've seen before. I would say that's not original. Or what would you say? Did you see something like this before? I'm seeing some more strange things here. Do you see them too? Look at some of the chips. See what I mean? The white stuff that is thermal paste. But where should the heat be dissipated? To the cardboard box? Certainly not. Here should be a metal shield to which the heat can be dissipated. And I see something else. Look here. Under the circuit board is also a metallic RF shield. The PCB and the plastic housing doesn't match together. Normally you have a metallic shielding or an RF card board, but not both together. Have you ever seen it like this? Can this be directly from production? I think not. But now let's see if our magic box works. Or are there more surprises? Directly after switching on, I checked the currents on the 5 volt and the 9 volt rail. They look okay. So it seems that there are no critical short circuits. And now let's see if I was right. Does this thing work? <laughs> yes, for sure. What a bummer. I think all retro hobbyists can understand what I mean. But of course, it's always great when another C64 lives, right? Okay, that should be no issue. That's because of the broken key. Let's lift the stamp up and put some sticky clay on it, so that it will not make contact again. And hey, works as expected. So let's write a little program. Okay, great. Another C64 
saved from trash. But now let's do some more detailed tests with our diagnostic harness. I bought this from Sven Peterson, a very helpful tool. So again, thanks to Sven. So then we connect the keyboard and the dongle for the serial port and the two control ports and the self-made diagnostic cartridge. But let things speed up a little bit. Hey, that looks really great. All things okay. And now the sound check. Sounds good at first. I will test this again later with the SID tester. Next, let's clean the case and the circuit board properly. I use a dishwasher for this. Temperature to a maximum of 50 degrees Celsius and use half of a dishwasher tap. And this is the result. Pour deep clean, but the yellowing has not disappeared, of course. To get rid of it, I usually paint the cases in their original color or bleach them in the sun. To remove rubber residue like this, I use a dirt eraser. Even the stickers are still fully intact after the dishwasher treatment. If you want to know how I paint or bleach my plastic cases, feel free to check out the video description. I'll link two videos of mine there. And here is how the PCB turns out. After the dishwasher, let the PCB dry for 24 hours before turning it on. Nice and shiny. All small parts into a plastic bag, not to lose anything. And then let's move on to the next. And here is our next beauty. Also yellowed of course, but beside that looks very nice. And even the warranty sticker is untouched. Now you have two possibilities. Peel off the sticker carefully or cut carefully with a razor knife to expose the screw. If you want to keep the original sticker, you can put it back right beside the screw hole to keep it. to the previous device, here we see how it is mounted correctly. A metallic shielding plate that is also used as a cooling plate. All chips are in place, that's a good sign for now. And now, as a next step, let's power that thing up and see if it works. 700 milliamperes, that's okay for the longboard. Hmm, that looks not okay. Something to investigate, yes. I connected the diagnostic harness, so let's see what happens. Okay, the fault is the same like on the basic startup screen. The 
character ROM seems to be bad. Yes, that could be a possible root cause for the fault, because the C64 diagnostics use the internal character ROM as char set. Also interesting, the pattern changes when playing sound. So next let's try the dead test cartridge. Aha, now the fault is gone. The dead test cartridge uses its own font and bypasses the character ROM of the C64. So partially defective character ROM seems to be the root cause here. So I would say let's check this in more detail. So let's fire up the soldering iron and get rid of the RF shielding. In this case I set the temperature a little higher because the large ground surfaces absorb a lot of heat. Let's check the position of the character ROM in the schematic. So here we see U5 is our character ROM chip. it was better to add some fresh solder, in other cases it's enough to add only some flux. Check if the pins are really loose, if not, they will get a special treatment. So if some of the pins won't get loose, then add some fresh solder and try again. To release a chip, I use a plastic tool here, because a metal screwdriver or something like that could hurt the traces. All the pads look fine, nothing's damaged. So let's clean up with some isopropanol. Do not use for brushing teeth anymore. <coughs> Now I will use my fully working sieve socket machine to check the broken character ROM. Additionally for sure you can also do the cross check, so means you put a working good character ROM into the broken machine. But in our case I would say it's not really necessary, because it's very likely that the character ROM is the problem. The error is not as obvious as in the other C64, but with a good chip in the sieve socket machine it works without problems. Let's do the counter test anyway. And with a good char ROM the bad machine works fine. Thanks for watching and see you next time, your Dr. 64.